Hi, I'm Rick at Rick Turns, and today's video is... It is ring tool time. Okay, it's ring tool time. Yes, this is the ring tool I made in my last couple of videos uh, that were published just about a week ago, I think. Well, by the time this one gets out, it'll probably be more like two weeks. But uh, ring tool has got a ring right here on the end. This is a one-way termite bit, ring bit, termite bit, that's, that's what they call it, apparently because it eats wood up so well. And uh, I mounted it in this steel shaft right here. And then I turned this handle here and uh, counterweighted it there and put a, a ferrule on it right there. But anyway, the question is, how good does it work? I've wondered about these for a long time Got to find out today. All right, let me show you another few of the ring tool or the ring bit right here, appropriately named in a circle here. So it's a ring. And as I mentioned, one way calls it their termite tool or their termite bit. You can buy the entire tool from one way. You don't have to make it yourself. I just like doing that. Now, <clears throat> How do we use the... So, here's the termite tool. It is sharp, sharpened right there. It is also sharpened on the reverse side right there. Okay, I'm running at about 1,000 RPM. This is a piece of wet wood. The moisture content on it uh, is showing up at about 22%, something like that. So, it is not dry wood in any event. To use the termite tool, and I'm following the instructions uh, the One Way Information gave. You start cutting to the right of the center. Okay, so there's the center. And you could probably start cutting at the center if you wanted to, but uh, anyway. Start cutting on center. And just push it in like that. And keep going. And you'll notice I've got the, uh, the ring oriented almost vertical. It's more like it's at a one o'clock position, something like that. Then the cut with it. Keep it pointed at uh, one or two o'clock and just pull it across the wood. It is cutting very well. Now I am putting more effort into it than I would with a scraper or um, a bowl gouge. But that's okay because if we take a look at this, I did say it was wet wood, remember, but we take a look right down in there. We're going cross grain here. This is, this thing, grain's running this way. I'm doing in grain turning. Take a look in here, no tear out at all. Only a little bit of tear out in this piece of punky area right here. This part was done with a gouge, um, going straight across with a push cut. You can see um, we got some tear out with the gouge. Not a lot, but a little bit. But that termite tool is leaving a great surface. That is the first thing that impressed me about using the termite tool. So now I'm going to reset the cameras. I want to show you some real close-ups of how that bit is cutting. All right, let's get up close and personal with this. Once again, about a thousand RPM, putting the tool right in there, holding the bit at about one o'clock. And it is hard to do with a camera in the way. Let me try again. Get a little bit better angle here. Try to see what I'm doing. Now 
Now the one thing you don't want to do with a termite tool, you don't want to present the surface like that. Guess what happens? That is a catch. No question about it. Where'd that catch go? You can see the dig right there where I caught it. Do not try and turn with a termite tool like that. There is a bevel here, and possibly you could get good enough at it, I guess, so that you wouldn't get a catch, but <laughs> I'm not gonna turn it that way. It works like this, perfectly like that. So, how's it gonna do on the sidewalls here of an interior? Say I had a tall vase and I wanna cut the sidewalls. So let's try that. Still on the bottom. Now I'm on the sidewall. If you take a look at the tool, we're gonna hit right there, but going up the sidewall, you've really got a scraping cut right there. And if we look inside here, yeah, we got some uh, tear out, uh, some rough cutting and so forth. See if I can do a little bit better on that. There we go. That's a little bit better. I was trying to cut too much material off before. You can see right in here, still got tear out in this punky wood right here. Not too surprising, a little tear out there and there. See if I can get rid of that. Okay, other than the punky wood, got rid of almost all the tear out and tool works down in there. That's kind of cool. So I'm gonna run this right across here. Once again, you know, this is end grain. As you saw there, I'm cutting with this edge and this edge, depending on how I angle the tool. And uh, got a pretty good cut there. I wasn't making a big effort to avoid tool marks, but one thing I do immediately notice there is no tear out here, and that's kind of nice. So it does really well on end grain. Now, this is long grain right here, so I'm gonna change the cameras around and we're gonna try it out on long grain. This thing's probably, it's a little bit out of round. So I roughed it out a couple of days ago. Let's take a look at this. This is the part I just cut. Wow, <laughs> that is really smooth. And you know why, at least in my opinion, when we're cutting with this, we're really shear cutting, particularly on the outside here, right there. We're doing a, uh, a cut and a shear uh, scrape at the same time, and it is coming out really, really smooth. Now I should mention, this is not uh, a, a roughing tool. This is not for taking out 
a lot of material. Uh, at least, say, not on the outside of a bowl where it's all uneven and everything. Uh, on the inside, yeah, it's going to take out material there. It's going to be kind of slow going. So this works extremely well. And I've got a really smooth cut there. If I would uh, be a little more careful, I could probably do better. Now, is it as good as using a skew on here? Probably not, but it's pretty darn close. And if I were a little bit better <coughs> at using it, I might get it as good as a skew. Let's go on. I want to get a close-up of the long grain cut. The next thing I want to take a look at is dry wood. That piece I was working on before, as I mentioned, it was still green. This is dry, very, very dry. It has been sitting in my workshop for, I think, eight years. We got some very rough grain here. I just uh, roughed this down to round with my uh, gouge. Got some very rough grain there. I did not even get it all the way down to round on the inside. Uh, it's still doing a real good job of cutting down there. I, I've got a lot of tool marks, obviously, but there's no tear out. Let's see if I can do a better job here. I'm still cutting right down on here on this part of the tool and a little bit up towards the top like that. Uh, got the tool held at about uh, uh, two o'clock instead of one o'clock. Perfect, no tear out. And I attribute the horrible tool marks there. <laughs> when I'm trying to turn on video, I got my hand way back here. I really need it up here uh, to be able to control things a little bit better. But I need to keep my hand out of the way of the video camera. Now then, let's uh, I'm gonna try out the sides here. some pretty good shavings there. All right, that is a perfect cut right through there. Obviously, uh, the bowl is still out around. That's what's causing that. That's a perfect cut there. These are in the, uh, the long grain here. These are in, now wait a minute. Here's the long grain right here. Aha! So these cuts are in the cross grain and they're really, really good. That's where I usually get tear out. All right, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, except, as I said, uh, I've got tool marks all over the place, but that's my fault, not the tools. Now we're gonna go over to the outside. All right, on the outside of the bowl here. Let's take a quick look at what I've got. As I say, I uh, brought this back down to round with my uh, uh, five inch inch bowl gouge, we got tear out here and a uh, little bit up here, not too much. More tear out here, which is, this is the inner grain here. And uh, then a little more tear out here. 
up here, some tear out, and so forth. So now we're going to see how the termite tool will work on it. And I'm going to be turning with the back of the uh, bit there. And as you can see, I've got the tool rest a little too close. Need more clearance for this. Getting some very fine shavings. Let's take a look at that. Okay, nice. Okay, the tear out that I had down in these areas completely gone. Uh, and right up here completely gone too. Once again, I, I've got tool marks left in there and uh, that's uh, I think a consequence of trying to stay out of the way of the camera when I uh, turn. Back on the uh, top part of the cutter. I'm holding that at about a two o'clock position. And let's see how that looks. Good. Still got some tear out there. That was kind of deep. I don't think I cut far enough. Take a look. Oh boy, that is great. All right. Well, I'm sure uh, one question that comes to your mind, how do you sharpen the damn thing? I uh, thought you'd never ask. Um, it's a ring, it's a circular thing. Gotta, gotta put that on the grinder somehow and sharpen the outside. That seems kind of iffy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, um, what one way uh, recommends is a cone bit like this. Uh, a cone, what do we call this, a cone center? Nah, I guess it's a cone grinding bit is what it is. This is the one that they sell for about eight bucks. And uh, you're gonna take it and put it down in here and roll it around like that. That's what they say to do. They said, don't push it straight down in there. Put it down in there a little bit and roll it around. So they also say, hey, you can't use a drill press for this. It's gotta be at least 16,000 RPM. And better would be faster. Uh, faster it would be better. So what are you gonna do? I have a drill press. I no longer have a router. And that's what One Way recommends uh, using. Put this in your router on a router table. And they sell a little, uh, little puck of metal that you tighten this into. And um, then you put that on your router and sharpen it that way by moving it around on the table. Okay. Well, I got rid of my router and my router table a long time ago. I used to do flat work and I got rid of it a long time ago though. So what am I gonna do? One suggestion that was made to be by Mike Peace, Mike Peace Wood Turning, is use your rotary tool like a Dremel. Okay, you know what? I had a rotary tool and I can't find it. What I'm gonna use is this rotary tool. Uh, I think it's commonly referred to as a zip tool, uh, but I don't know, that's probably a trade name by someone, I guess. And um, it's used for making cutouts and drywall for uh, outlets, electrical outlets and stuff. And, and indeed, that's why I bought it, to do that. So I am going to Put my uh, cone bit right in here and uh, get this tightened down here. Oh. 
This is the back side of the tool. So you can get a good look at it here. Did it get sharp? Yeah, I think so. It's kind of hard to tell, actually. And I hope you could see I was rolling it around there. Now let's go get the front side right here. Yeah, that's good. So it is actually quite easy to sharpen. And that's a relief. I have been tremendously impressed with this. As you might could tell during the preceding clips on the video, this little uh, ring cutter, yeah, it's just great. I'm just real impressed with it. It's not really good for hogging off a lot of wood. It's, it's more of a, not quite a finishing tool. It's a little better than that. But boy, it sure does leave a good finish on the wood, even cross grain, which is where I would always get tear out and struggle to uh, get rid of that tear out. This one does great. Uh, my only regret about this tool is I didn't find it years ago. <laughs> See you next video.